DeSanto Propane is four generations strong as a trustworthy family-owned business with unmatched customer service. Go online at DeSantoPropane.com for more info or call toll-free at 1-800-752-4574 today. Since 1937, the difference has been DeSanto Propane. You want to know what's happening in the Finger Lakes? We do too. We're going in depth with decision makers in the heart of upstate New York to get the answers you need. From the team of FingerLakes1.com, this is Inside the FLX. Welcome back to Inside the FLX. We are about a week removed from Geneva City Council's May meeting, and that means it's time for our monthly chat with Geneva Mayor Steve Valentino. Steve, uh, thanks so much for being here. Let's start with short-term rentals. Uh, the vote was 6-2 uh, to spend a little more time on this one. Uh, talk to us about that. Yeah, I know. It's a good start, Josh. Thank you very much for having me on the show. Um, I think, uh, you know, short-term rentals, at least for me and Councilor Peeler, has been a discussion for quite some time now. It was passed by the last council. We were, we were looking at implementation. There was one gap, and that was the actual fee in order to initiate it. And this council being new, wanted to get up to speed with what they're voting on. So I appreciate that. So we've been having some work sessions and working through it. The um, the goal of the short-term rental that we just passed the first reading of the ordinance, and we actually passed a uh, resolution for a public hearing coming in June. So what will happen in June, we'll have a public hearing. And then we will have the second reading of the ordinance and there will be a following resolution. And I believe the resolution is going to be for a $250 per bedroom fee for the licensing. So that's what we should see on the agenda for June. It did pass six to two. Um, Councillor Lavin proposed uh, a different resolution that was limiting the areas where you could allow bed and breakfast, or excuse me, the Airbnbs. And I think the challenge there was he wanted downtown and in the um, corridor where the row houses were, just to have Air, our Airbnbs there. The challenge there is we've had Airbnbs open up throughout the city because we didn't have legislation in place. We have 107 of them, not 138 like Councilor Levin referred to. The um, 107 people have already invested in the city of Geneva. They followed all the rules that were or were not in place at the time. Sure. So they're existing. So if we if we did implement a regulation that, uh, that only allowed them in certain areas, we would have to figure out what to do with those existing Airbnbs, whether you grandfathered them in, whether you did a sunset clause, it will be there'll be complications. For me, um, and I'm glad we passed six to two on the first reading, and I imagine there might be some tweaks in the second reading. For me, we needed to put something in place that drove accountability and drove some level of revenue to be able to at least counteract the expenses that the city's going to incur. And that's where the fee comes in place. And I think we've had a lot of support from the majority of Airbnb residents, Airbnb owners and residents to that, that at least we have a start to some level of controls of operations of the Airbnb. So that, that's our, you know, hopefully in June, we'll have something that we can start implementing. Sure. Um, when it comes to enforcement, that seems to be one of the one of the big question marks for municipalities across the board when they start to evaluate what kinds of proposals to regulate short term rentals. Um, do you feel pretty good about how the city will approach that eventually when it when it comes time? Yeah, I think we're pretty confident. We um we added code enforcement support, but I think what we're trying to do with Airbnbs is nothing outside the norm. We don't do with other operations in the city. I mean, we're going to implement noise ordinances, which are already implemented. You know, and and this gives us kind of a three strike rule. If you have complaints on your property, and we we found that the majority of Airbnb owners are very responsible. Um, the Airbnb and the VRBO organizations have their own rules and regulations to try to keep things in check. So there is a minority that's causing nuisances in the city of Geneva, but those nuisances are usually related to existing rules and regulations in the city of Geneva. So on a three strike rule, we will suspend your um, license, operating license for 60 days. And if it's a repetitive, um, it can go to a longer expense, a suspension and ultimately a re revocation of the 
um, license. Any appeals of that can go in front of the zoning board or through our court systems. Sure. I was just reading in the Finger Lakes Times this morning, uh, committee proposals, uh, the committee proposal that we talked about a couple months ago uh, was rejected again. Uh, your thoughts on on how much time is realistically needed to to properly digest all of the moving parts with something like that, with a change like that? Um, obviously, this is not something that could happen in one or two cycles, right? Yeah, you know, Josh, you mentioned that the committee proposal was rejected. Um, it was really just a discussion. And I don't think we have a formal proposal from anybody. You know, and I asked Council Lavin, show, show me where the value is. Um, show me the path to get there. And really, it's, you know, the, the comment is that Syracuse has it, and Rochester has it, and Ontario County has it. And, um, you know, we're being compared to organizations and municipalities that are that are much larger than us, that have a larger structure than us. Um, you know, we have staff in place that, that control many of our actions in the city of Geneva. So right now our charter uh, has us as a committee as a whole. We're not, we're not allowed to have standing committees. If we wanted to change the charter, which is possible, it could drive a referendum and it could allow the citizens to vote for that referendum. But um, it's also the lengthy process, not only the legal aspect of it, but working with staff to understand how that would be implemented and where the value will be created. There's also relieving some of the power of city council into committees, and that's probably the biggest league official is um, council isn't supposed to relieve their power into into committee organizations, at least based on our structure right now. Sure. Uh, okay, so let's get into some uh, what I would say is better news here with some developments happening across the city. Um, it, possible redevelopment of the Medias property, uh, obviously fire there a few years ago lot of ideas. Uh, if you had it your way, what uh, what would you like to see happen there? Well, I think the, the proposal in place right now by the, the current owner that's going to the Restore New York um, funding opportunity, I think is, is is an excellent one. I you know rotating the building ninety degrees, getting getting off of the creek. I, I can giggle a little bit because I worked there as a, as a young man in nineteen seventy six, and you could actually see a hole in the floor when it was Medias Big M. You could actually see the creek through the uh, floor in the basement. So rotating that building ninety degrees, getting off of the creek, putting the Parking in the back would be a great idea. I think, he's, you know, the proposal of having retail and then some mixed use with some apartments up top is an excellent opportunity for the area. You know, and it gives you that area of Geneva possibly the opportunity to have that, that pop pocket um, supermarket available. Yeah. Um, and we're going to talk about the, the sales redevelopment here in a couple minutes, too. But uh, housing, more housing opportunities, is that sort of the the theme of what you think uh, the city really should be looking for in the, the coming years when it comes to these issues? Yeah, we have major gaps. You know, so we talk about economic development and people do say that housing is a component of economic development. I do agree with that. You know, I'll kind of reel back the tape to 1998 when Guardian Glass wanted to land here. Um, you know, we had to have the proper type of workforce and the proper um, fire department, proper access to, to the thruway and rail access. I mean, there's a lot of criteria to bring business in. And I think, you know, when we talk about being a tourist industry, which Honestly, Geneva is a major tourist industry. Um, you need that kind of housing that supports those those employees. And we have, you know, I've been pushing for a lot of opportunities to get infrastructure in areas of undeveloped property in the city of Geneva, and also those um, those gap opportunities throughout the different neighborhoods to put new houses in there. But we really need that sustainable housing. And you know, my dream there. It's pretty simple. Um, back in the 50s, my parents took advantage of that that initial small house, a starter home that was provided to, to families. I'd love to have a project, and I hope the Ontario County housing plan that we um, have gone through provides that opportunity for that, that nice starter home for families. It's a very reasonable cost, and it has sustainability to it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, staying with the housing theme, uh, the sales redevelopment, obviously very exciting for the city, particularly with with how prominent of a location that the high school is or, or the former high school uh, sits on. How uh, important do you think that is to have that project completed uh, within the next few years here for the city itself? 
you know, I think it's, it's huge. It's going to be a catalyst for that area. Um, I'm a graduate. I'm a 78 graduate in sales. So I'm, I'm glad to see something good happen with that building instead of it being torn down or going disrepair. And, you know, I think the type of housing that's going to go there is going to be very beneficial to that area. It's in walking distance to downtown. Um, you know, there's, there's other... Um, things that could take place in that facility, but I think that's probably one of the best things. You're close to the churches, close to the schools. You can walk to the plaza if you needed to. I just, you know, it's just a prime location, and I think it's going to be a great benefit to that area and to the city of Geneva. Um, he's not asking for a pilot. Yeah. Um, okay, so we need to shift gears a little bit here uh, and talk about road work because the number one question that we get is, even though we've talked about it now, I think two or three times this year, uh, what's happening on 5 and 20? Uh, you know, the governor just announced $1.4 million to, to help continue that work. Um, mainly, could you speak to the, the timeline of what people can expect to see now that the weather's getting better uh, along 5 and 20 this summer? I'm taking a guess you haven't been down there in the last couple of weeks. I have not. I have not personally, no. Okay. Yeah, you know, and, and Josh, it's interesting because it seemed like the, the governor was giving the city of Geneva money for the road. It wasn't the, uh, the governor giving the city of Geneva, it was just as you said, continuing the um, improvements of the 5 and 20 quarter right there. And what was interesting was if you went down the street last week, um, you know, the curbs are already in and it was the, the initial paving was in and it was actually a four lane highway <laughs> um, last week. And everybody was like, I thought it was going to a road diet. I thought it was going to be two in one direction, one in the other direction with a bike lane. And we had to tell everybody, just take it easy because it is happening. I went down there this weekend and the second layer of paving is, is already started in, in 50% of it is done. So I expect to see that completed probably within the next 30 days. So I, I'm, I'm ecstatic that it's going to be done before, um, you know, school gets out and, and things really start happening on the lakefront. Okay. Wait, we, you need to, you need to expand on that a little bit because that was, okay. that was one of the questions that I saw that I didn't understand because it's, so work has been done making it four lanes or just sort of cleaning up the road, I suppose. But the eventual plan is to go down to two lanes with the road. Yep. Diet? yep. Okay. Yeah. So, so work something. has been done. Curbs are in. Got it. The first layer of paving is down. Some striping went in. It was temporary. And the second layer of paving is going down now. And the final striping will have two lanes in one direction, one lane in another. And it'll also have the, the bike path lane also. Gotcha. Okay. Um, also, uh, this week we saw a, a story in the Finger Lakes Times about the city facing legal action uh, for allegedly not paying a contractor. I'm sure you can't go into detail about this, uh, but what can you tell us about the situation? Honestly, it's, it's litigation, so I can't say anything, but I can say I'm disappointed that we're at this point. Sure. That's about all I can say. Absolutely. Um, okay. So, uh, I think it was about a month and a half ago when we talked, uh, we were talking about assessments and assessments were going to be coming out. Uh, and probably, I think it was around the second week of April, I started to see some emails uh, from readers who who had, I, I assume, gotten, gotten assessments in the mail or proposed uh, reassessments in the mail. Uh, what's the feedback been like so far for you guys? In, interestingly enough, it's it's been fairly quiet but I, you know I, I don't think people pay attention to deadlines too often and um, I have I've had my meeting with the assessor already I, I own two properties and uh, I'm actually the executor of my mother's property so I had three properties and you know overall I probably had an increase of close to three hundred thousand dollars in my assessment so it was it was it was a direct experience for me and um, you know, number one, I'm glad to see the values of homes in the city of Geneva going up. I think that's very important. And I try to reason with people saying, aren't you glad your home is worth more now? Um, is it worth what the assessor is saying? That that's a conversation you need to have with the assessor. And, you know, this can be a lengthy conversation because we can talk about tax levy. We can talk about tax rate. And I, the, the, I think the challenge for people seeing their assessment go up is when they look at the calculations that were provided and how it's going to impact their taxes. Those calculations are done. We're at seventeen twenty-five a thousand right now, and those calculations were done with the assumption if there was a forty percent increase in assessed value citywide, and you took that forty percent and applied it to the tax rate, it would drop it down into the ten sixty range. So it looks like your taxes would not go up, but that's not realistic. So when we talk about tax levy and tax rate and assessment, um, it, it gets to be a complicated formula. 
formula. And, and what I what I try to tell people is you have a procedure to follow if you want to dispute it. Ultimately, I don't think we're going to see a 40% increase in assessment. Um, I think we're going to see negotiations will take place based on uh, proposed assessed values, uh, final assessed values. And when the city comes down to their budget this year, I think we're going to see a reduction in the tax rate. What that all looks like, it's a complicated formula. Um, we're seeing increases in every expense we have for the city of Geneva. We're not going to say that we're not you know, we're going to leave the tax rate where it is because that would be a windfall and it wouldn't be fair to the taxpayers of Geneva. We're going to be conscious about being efficient on how we apply our expenditures, where we get our incomes from. And um, we're going to be as honest and, and as and as open as we can with the tax rate and letting people know how things are going to go forward in the future. But there is a process with, with assessment. And I actually, you know, out of the three properties I mentioned, um, two of them I was I was happy coming to an agreement with the assessor, the third one I'm going to agreement. So there's, there's a process available for everybody to follow. Yeah, learn about that process and, and don't forget to stay engaged uh, when it comes to budget time for, for your community, wherever you are. Uh, Mayor, thanks for the time. As always, appreciate it. Thank you very much, Josh. Have a great day. You too.